Hi, and welcome to Frazzlecast. Climb aboard the gnome train. Woo! Chugga, 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 woo! Please make sure to keep your limbs and experimental instruments inside the train at all times. And now, on with the show. A podcast by a Blizzard fan gnome about World of Warcraft and geeky stuff. I promise you, they do talk about the World of Warcraft. They just go off the rails sometimes. I'm Frasley, and I'm joined by one of my roommates from BlizzCon, Aeon! <laughs> hey, Fraz, what's up? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing good. It's so weird seeing it, because like I've heard you when, I, when I've been on the Catalina Wine Mixer raids, but it's weird seeing you again, because I've not seen you since November. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm really hoping that I can get back in November, too. I had a great time down there, and... Uh, I was glad to meet you. You were like the first podcaster I'd actually met in person. So uh, it was a great introduction to the community. That was fun. Like I told somebody, selfishly, budget-wise, I'd be okay if there was no (laughs) BlizzCon. But I don't want to not have no BlizzCon because of like of the coronavirus or something because – I want the networking. I want that hit of adrenaline. Yeah. And, you know, I can see the benefit of not doing one and that the next one would be that much more epic. But at the same point, you got to do another one. Like, Blizz, you can't cut it for a year. So yeah, we'll see. I, I'm pretty confident that it's still going to happen. Oh, me too. And somebody at BlizzCon that I met was Epic Insanity. And Epic Insanity, what time is it? It's time to go around the table. Great idea. So what have you been up to recently? Pretty much in the game, been just doing WoW chores, you know, as I call them among my friends. I have a lot of real life friends who, uh, they love to say like, oh, wow, it's just a bunch of chores. And it's like, yeah, but it's chores you love to do. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, my twin brother and I have been leveling up our cloaks together, been doing Mythic Plus with the Catalina Wine Mixer, which has been a ton of fun. Just in general, starting to actually do some arena because I need that conflict and strife, sadly. So uh, I think I'm at 1,500 and I got to get to 1,600. Kirk and I, my twin, uh, we're doing those together. That's my uh, best in slot for my heal spec. So I got to get that up because we've been having a healer attendance problem some weeks. (laughs) We've just had some IRL stuff come up recently and I've had to switch back and forth. So keeping that handy just in case. And then I I see that, that you've been doing a little bit of game variety. I have an IRL Discord server that we've been growing for, I don't know, years and years since eighth grade or something. Discord wasn't around then. (laughs) But uh, so we played Dota 2. We started playing Overwatch again recently just because of the recent uh, hero bans and experimental mode. And uh, Dota Underlords, if anyone knows that, it's sort of like the League of Legends auto chess game. Um, Oh, yes. I love that game, but I don't have enough time to play it as much as I want. And then, of course, just working like crazy. I mean, I my flight was late tonight, and that that's standard for me flying to Dallas and back. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I just the flying back and forth. It like it was enough for me to fly like to and from BlizzCon. Like whenever I fly, it's an ordeal. How do you make it not an ordeal? It's like anything. Once it's a routine, it's pretty normal, right? But I have little tips and tricks. I mean, when I'm packing, it takes me not even ten minutes to pack. You kind of keep two copies of everything, right? I've got my suitcase packed and that never gets unpacked. And then I've got my home life and that just stays here. And I try to keep those two things separate in in terms of like clothes and uh, toiletries and all that stuff. It kind of makes you forget that you're shifting from one phase to the other. But it is crazy. I mean, I can't do this forever. That's for sure. Maybe we'll see. (laughs) Well, maybe then you could go onto the farm because I've been doing a little bit of farming recently. All right. <laughs> I've been uh, playing Farming Simulator with Spaz, so th- that's been a lot of fun. We've started a farm called Humble Farms, and that's a game you just go nice and slow. You, you move the harvester. There is no speeding up stuff. You wait for the stuff to grow. Today, I couldn't work on one of my fields because it was raining, and you had to wait for the rain to go. Like I was like, okay, can I go back to my house and sleep? Nope, you can't sleep till it's night. So is this almost like, I don't know, have you ever heard of the Norwegian train channel? No. Okay, so there's a TV station in Norway where all they do is they have a pretty much like a GoPro on the front of a train and it just drives through the fjords of Norway and people sit there and watch it for 10 hours at a time. Whoa, maybe we are because I've was i been reading today about people that are sleeping on TikTok or sleeping on YouTube and they're streaming it because it's kind of against the Twitch toss to s- sleep on Twitch. I, I understand there's really no rules on TikTok, so they're the, the doing it there. But, huh, interesting. I, I could see maybe 
a 24 hour farming simulator. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think I could do that. Farming simulator in real time. Rain goes on for 12 hours and you're waiting for it for 12 hours. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played Farming Simulator. I've played Minecraft, which I guess is sort of like a sped up version of that. It's sort of similar because like you're you're waiting around at night. Thankfully, Minecraft has those beds. That was like when you get that in any world, you're like, yes, I can finally control time. Right, right. That's always the first thing that my friends and I go for. We're like, everyone get a bed so that we can skip night. Yeah. And another place that, that, that I've been slowing down a little bit is... Kunlai Summit. So I, I went to, to Mr. Pandari on my Mechanome Mage. I, t- I took some time to enjoy some of the, the zones I, I'm working on for Loremaster. It's nice. There's a really good story there. The Grommels, you get to rescue the Grommels, and they're like, oh, lucky dudes, you smell like good fortune. <laughs> those lucky dudes and loots, those are my favorite. Yes. I, I'm always like, oh, friend of the Grommel. Lucky dudes and loot. <laughs> and then after that, just working on Legion. So I, I, I've never done the order hall for, for Legion for on other than the Warriors. That's the one I've done. So now when I'm going through, I'm like, I want to do different things. So I'm working on the Mage one. And there's a really cool storyline. It's about the, 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 the Tyrus fall and the, and the Tyrus glade. And it's, it's some, I must have rushed through the Mage hall because I've, I've done a little bit of it. But I never realized, oh, they're the ones that are over in Tyrus fall glades. Yeah. It's funny because... When I first played through WoW, you know, I joined way back uh, when I was 14, and I'm I'm 26 now, so 12 years, holy cow! But when I first joined, I I had no interest in the story, and I really didn't start getting interested until this year when I started listening to merely a setback. And then the, when they start talking about some of the characters that show up in like the you know the mission tables and the story yeah. halls and all that stuff, I'm like, wait, there's a lot of story there. Why did I never experience that? But I played the game. So I actually had to go back to my Druid Hall and look around. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of really good lore here. I guess I should have paid attention the first time around. It's incredible. Like, and it adds a whole other level to the game. And that's why I I enjoy like those lore podcasts. Like, yeah, somebody in in chat who I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out because they do an awesome podcast. Ally of Dungeon Fables. I love Dungeon Fables, and I I love Morley Gray. I love merely a setback because it's nice learning how that lore affects the game. And then when you're going through, like. Oh, I remember that. Now, I had to go to Scarlet Halls recently on my mage because there's a portal for Old Dalaran that you can only get once you get the telephone for Old Dalaran, and that's in Scarlet Halls. So I, I ran through Scarlet Halls, and I always love Harlan's harem because it's <laughs> cause in the fight, a bunch of like uh, of, of uh, Harlan's. Uh, Escorts will, will will come in and, and, <laughs> and I just, to, this is start, starting to sound like fears getting on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I I'm getting a sounder on me. I'm, I'm more like a great podcast. So we need one of those for our raid night. <laughs> hey, so, I I bet I bet Jin could uh could, could he get a copy of that. I I don't have a copy here. I mean I know Epic and Zorts has a copy of me with another with another cursing. <laughs> We had fear tanking last night because uh, usually Kirk Yama, my twin, he, he does the tanking, but he's been doing work conferences a lot, so he was going to be really late. So fear jumps in, doesn't know any of the fights. He's just tanking because he's been doing it on Mythic Plus for us. So we needed that sounder quite a bit last night. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was great. I love having him on the team. I, I hadn't really listened to their podcast beforehand, and I've listened to a couple episodes now, but... Um, him and Jin, it's been great having them on our team. We've kind of got this, like, I don't know how Catalina Wine Mixer did this so well, but I think we have representation from four or five different podcasts on there, which is great. Yeah, it's like the the secret elite. <laughs> when I had your, your brother on on the Converted Podcast, there was like name drop left and right. I mean, I encouraged it because I was like, oh, who's all the other people on the team? It's incredible the people that you have on that group. Yeah. And, you know, sadly, Jared had to back down because he's doing his horde raid. So, uh, you know, eventually we'll convince him to come back to the right side. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll get him back on our raid team. So raiding and all this stuff. I take it you're a gamer. I mean, of course you are because you're, you're on this podcast. Yeah. Yep. So how did you get into gaming? So I got into gaming right around when Nintendo 64 was around. Ooh. Yeah. But my parents wouldn't get it for me. 
So we got little glimpses of gaming just from visiting friends of the family, my older brother's friend's house. If they had a console, we would play that. But it wasn't until we got a Game Boy and it was the original big gray brick Game Boy that we really got into gaming. It was actually Zelda. Oh, yes. Yep. I don't even know what Zelda it was. That's how young I was. But at the same time, we got our first computer in our family, and we got Sonic. And I swear, Kirk and I were on that computer for six hours a day from then on out trying to play this game. And We fell in love. I mean, I've been a gamer since then. I think we were maybe six years old. But uh, my fondest memories of gaming growing up actually come from Diablo 2. I love that game. I can't play it anymore, though, because I'm not a big retro gamer. Um, I need to be playing the more modern stuff. My older brother had it, and he's 10 years older than me. Kirk and I and my next oldest brother, we weren't old enough to be playing this game. It's rated M. You know, it's got scantily clad women on the front of the box, or not on the box, but in the descriptions and everything, and it's got a ton of blood, and it's demons, and I was in a religious family. So, like, no, absolutely not. Can't play this game. So my dad confiscated the game. And we went and stole it, put the box back so that he thought that he had it. And we had the disc in our computer and we would play all day when he walked in. Quick, turn it off, turn it off, go to Neopets or something. (laughs) And that's how I really got into gaming. That's when I, I was, you know, dedicated after school, playing four hours a day at a minimum when I wasn't doing homework. Uh, I was on that game. I loved it. Is that, is that actually how you got into, into your line of work through gaming? Maybe. I went to Penn State and I knew that I wanted to do business. I used to tell my friend, they'd say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, a millionaire. <laughs> That's not my answer anymore. But uh, it was it was definitely a driving factor for me. I knew I wanted to do something where I never had financial instability. And so I said, okay, I'm going into business. I'll figure out what I'm going to do next, like what I'm going to do later. It wasn't until I went to a recruiting event my sophomore year, the recruiter said, well, cybersecurity is really taken off. And uh, I said, well, I'm a business student. I I can't do cybersecurity. He said, no, go get a minor in IST, which is computers. And uh, your risk degree in business, that'll be good enough. We'll we'll hire you then. So I went off and did it and been pretending that I'm a cybersecurity expert ever since. (laughs) Nice. Uh, So I'll I'll return back to that in a a second. Um, Yeah. So how, how did you get into World of Warcraft from Diablo? Eighth grade. We had had two friends. Uh, one of them is Howardo, but he doesn't play WoW right now. And another one, McRaldo Steve, I think he goes by right now. But so uh, they had been playing WoW for two years. They'd been trying to convince Kirk and I to join, but you know we didn't have enough money at that time. And our parents weren't forking over their credit cards after the whole, you know, they caught us playing Diablo several times. So, <laughs> so they're not supporting our gaming habits anymore. So eventually we told them, hey, when pigs fly, we'll play WoW. And for our birthday, they went out and bought us a fake flying pig. And so I said, all right, that's, and they came with a 15 day trial of wow. And we're like, okay, that's it. We got to play. So we've been playing ever since that was back in uh, sort of midway through Burning Crusade. I think during that tier, I only got to do Karazhan and then it went on to Wrath of the Lich King, which I still think is the best expansion in wow, but it's probably because that's when I really learned how to play. I think Wrath was one of the peaks of WoW too, because like there's so many people that have fond memories of that. The raids were so good. I, I know somebody working on a podcast episode about one of the big raids in that. Uh, hi, Allie. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I have a lot of friends who played during that time. I mean, there's just so much good stuff. I saw the Wrath get cinematic for the first time in game. It blew your mind. Yeah. Yeah. I love Wrath of the Lich King, probably just because Warcraft 3 was in there, you know, when I was playing Diablo. I played all the Blizzard games. The Warcraft 3 story was the first time that I really got attached to uh, a video game story. And so wanting to go defeat Arthas, I was really bad at Warcraft 3. And I think I barely beat Arthas in, in that game. And you don't really beat him. He wins, right? So yeah. that's all when when they said Wrath of the Lich King is coming, I'm like, yes, I finally get to go beat this guy. And like that was subconscious because the story wasn't a big deal to me. But for some reason, I had some emotional attachment to the story of that game. And I loved the aesthetic of it. Also, Old You Are, best raid of all time. Love oh, that raid. Yes. I've been going through that, trying to get Memoron's head and stuff like that. And I just I love all the stuff in it. I mean, just just so much in that in that zone i mean i love how like 
you're heading down to see Yog saron and it feels like Kingdom Hearts. I mean, there's just so yeah. much good in that. <laughs> yep. So one thing in gaming that I, depending on when you started, I bet your parents also probably didn't approve of is Dungeons and Dragons. You, you know, that's devil worship or like it's the occult. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I didn't start till college, so my parents had no say in the matter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I'm sure that they would have said it if I had started back in high school or something. Uh, I love D&D, a, a good D&D session. How did you get started playing D&D? So Kirk's a bigger nerd than I am, that's for sure. He picked up the book. I don't really know what convinced him to do it. I think he had a couple of friends that were also more nerdy than I am, uh, which was great because it, I ended up loving it. I love the creativity of it. I was an actor in high school, and so I, I kind of take pride in in the acting portion of D and D, but just in general, I love a good three person campaign where it's really intimate. The banter between everyone is really intimate. The story feels really connected. And I love crafting that with friends, right? Like actually after the session saying, what should we do next time? That would make the story of this better, not just for play, right? Rolling dice is rolling dice, but I love the story aspect of D and D. And so creating that collaboratively is what I think is the the most fun thing you can do in that. Were you a a, a player or did you also ascend to the role of Dungeon Master? <laughs> I eventually ascended. Um, Kirk did all the DMing and he, he still does today. He's much better at it than I am just from a, a preparatory standpoint. Um, I can't read the books for the life of me. So I read through the player's handbook the first time around and eventually got my way to reading through uh, enough of the DM's book to understand how to do it. I don't know if you know what a West March's campaign is. I've heard that from a few different people who do D&D, but I, I'm not. The, sh the short story is it's like 40 people in a Discord server. And then you can you like post, we're doing a session on Saturday. Six people can come. It's to this place, show up. And it's a shared story. I DM'd for one of those, which was one of the most stressful things you can do. Uh, I think I made some pretty good sessions, but at the same point, I, I won't do that again. It was too much work. What is a campaign that you're currently working on? We are in Baldur's Gate right now. I really like this campaign. The reason being that I've played the good guy in most of our campaigns. I'd say probably neutral good. I've taken on chaotic good for this one. I'm a sorcerer. I have a penchant for absinthe and moonshade. My favorite line from it is, nothing a little chaos can't solve. <laughs> Chaos is always good. I mean, you, yeah. you, you have to bring a little chaos into it. Yeah. I mean, when the game starts getting boring, I just throw a chaos bolt at the enemy and see what happens. <laughs> nice. I'm not a murder hobo, but I, I do like a little bit of chaos in the game. So then what would you say is one of your favorite gaming memories? This, this can be any gaming. So old you are, by far my favorite rating and gaming memory of all time. So... In Old You Are, the XT Destroyer robot, the second boss, or no, fourth boss, sorry. The fourth boss, it's got that little childish voice. It's a little toy robot. I mean, it's huge. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It, the one that goes, oh, new toy. <laughs> yeah. So that one, Old You Are was where they introduced the in-fight trigger hard mode, right? We didn't learn about that right away. We didn't know what that was. All we knew was when XT's heart is displayed, you got to DPS it as much as possible. You can't kill it. It's got too big of a health pool. So just do as much as you can and it'll deal damage to the boss. Well, me and all my real life friends, we had 12 people raiding at that time. We accidentally killed the heart, not knowing that it started hard mode. And so somebody goes like, what? It's never done that voice line before. What's that thing coming at me? Oh no, guys, it's hard mode. F it, we're doing it live. And we just adjusted and went crazy. And we got it the first time that we did it with just from sheer dumb luck because we weren't great raiders. So that was the most fun we've had in a raid. The F it, we're doing it live thing has been our, our meme ever since then. I've heard that on the Catalina One Mixture. Yeah, that's Kirk and I doing that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're just explaining a fight too long. And you just got to do it live. People yeah. just have to see what you're looking at. And so Kirk will just say, Luke, F it, we're doing it live. And he'll hit ready check and we're going. <laughs> I learned sometimes best from experience and doing things, making mistakes. You can explain stuff, but until I try it, I don't always get it. Yeah, that's true for everything, right? I think even if you look at method and whatnot, 
they expect their raid team to go through a couple pulls before they really start tweaking and fine tuning things. They know the first couple are just, hey, you got to see it. And what we don't see is, is all the like the practice on PTR that they do ahead of the, even the race of the world first. Yep. I don't get how they do that because at the same point, they're also gearing their mains. And yeah. I don't know if you were reading any of their tweets, but they did a Harry Potter movie marathon so that they could farm island expeditions to get their Heart of Azeroth to 80 before uh, raid opening. So they had all 20 members of their raid team, or you know, more than that, in Discord just listening to Harry Potter in the background. <laughs> wow. That actually sounds really cool. I, yeah. I could do that because there was a vacation where, where we, we watched that. I mean, the only, only problem is I would get distracted be like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I got to pay attention to Harry Potter now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great idea. Great community building thing. And that's what the game's all about. You're going to yeah. have a great team if you have a great community. And you are, are in a great community because you you and Kirk are the raid leads for Catalina Wine Mixer. We would call ourselves maybe the strategy raid leads. Um, we're responsible for watching the videos. Obviously, Shoe Boots does that too and helps us adjust. But he more or less says, Luke and Kirk, it, it's really up to you. You guys can define the strategy and change it up how you want, which I really like. I'm kind of a tactician in this game. So it's fun to do that take an input from everybody and try and distill it down to the best option for our specific team. So what brought you to rating? Because it's a skill that not everybody in WoW likes to do. Like, I don't love rating. I'm very competitive, but I, I hate, I wouldn't say hate. I don't like PVP because PVP just, it evokes like anger in you, you know? And yeah, as a Dota player, I get enough salt and sodium from that diet. I don't need it from my WoW diet too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't like raging. And that was a big thing growing up when we were playing Dota. It, Kirk and I would fight all the time over games that we were losing. And so I just, I like that WoW is me against the computer. If I'm getting mad, it's because I screwed up. The computer does the same thing every time. <laughs> Well, I have speculated that raiding would be kind of cool if they were to add in like deep mind. Yeah, I think that's coming eventually. Maybe when we get WoW too. Because like even islands, I've seen some of the different enemies act different. Like I, like the horde sometimes will sneak up behind you, and be like, "Oh, you there? Ah, I got gotcha. you." And there has yeah. to be some planning that goes into that, right? Because they've got to get around you first. I mean, maybe they're just teleporting them, but it, they do come around you. So, and you've been raiding since Karazhan. Yeah, Karazhan. Yep. So then how did uh, the Catalina wine mixer form? So Shoe Boots got tired of not being on a raid team. I think he started feeling the burnout. And I think in their last episode, they actually put it right. They said, when I'm not on a raid team, that's when I consider unsubbing. And I completely agree with that. So we had our IRL raid team back in the beginning of this expansion, but it's been the common theme that our players get back for the first raid tier. They do it for maybe three weeks and then they get bored and they quit. I'm tired of doing that. So we, I started joining community raid teams and eventually convinced Kirk like, hey, you know, I found the CTR community. It's a lot of really great people, really nice. Let's give it a shot. Let's join a raid team. We joined one, uh, which was uh, marginally competent. I think they go with group not valid now. Very funny team. Very different culture than Catalina Wine Mixer has. It's a lot of um, parents and people working. And so the only time they get to raid is the weekend mornings. They're very laid back. They don't mind if people aren't working on improving their DPS or anything. And that's something that we're trying to get better at with Catalina Wine Mixer. And I like being in the driver's seat. So I like being on this raid team too. <laughs> One thing that I've, I've noticed is you're serious, but you're also building that community. And, and even how you've you, you talked about the teams, you like that that group. It's the group that, that comes together that the raids, what, why you're all there Thursday nights, but you're enjoying talking with other people. Yes. Yeah. We made sure. I mean, Shoe Boots was the re, is the driver behind all this because Shoe Boots made the community with merely a setback. And he's obviously got his connections to Jin and to Fear and to Pat Crane and everyone else who's in our raid team. So when you have that base of just genuinely great people that are starting your team, you're going to attract genuinely great people to the team as well. And so Kirk and I have really just leached off of Shoe Boots' success, been completely benefiting from it. And I, I hope that they feel the same way that this is a good match. 
I can't say it enough. I love our raid team. And we say it every week in our discord, like, Hey guys, just randomly want to tell you, we have a great community here. Thanks. Have a good day. I'm honored to, 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 to be in your discord. I mean, I've been impressed by the raid team and, and if I wasn't uh, raiding people's ears every Thursday night, I could see Kelly, but one mixture being a team that I would at least want to be on as maybe not as a main player, but you know, one, one where I know what you mean, because it seems like a great team. And, you know, the few times that we've had you guest in the raid, we've loved it. You know, uh, we do talk about things like, hey, when we invite guests, what's our policy on all that stuff? We're still trying to work that out. Yeah. We definitely have like the raid team, which is like 25 people. And then we've got maybe five to seven what we call tentative raiders working out when it's OK to invite those people to raid versus when, you know, we need to buckle down and do progression. That's something that we're pushing up against for the first time, maybe the second time this week. Um, we have to start talking about like, hey, we're going back to normal Nazoth. We keep doing this week after week. It's getting really tiring to do this. What do we need to change to make it so that people aren't getting bored or burned out? It's all about taking care of our raid team. I like that. Trying to figure out when do you add yeah, the people? Because I, I got invited to one raid team that I will, I, I will never forget this raid team. I, I get invited in and they're asking, hey, do you know the fights? I say no. And someone's like, are you f***ing me? I'm like, okay, okay. See ya. <laughs> I've never seen that attitude from Catalina Wine Mixture. And I, I, I appreciate that because even like the, the one or two times I said, hey, if I'm, I'm pulling the raid back. I'm out of here. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to pull you guys down. And, yeah. We'll give it, you know, like four or five pulls usually. And then we'll start saying like, okay, you know, to be fair to the people who did put in the work. Let's yeah. start asking the people who haven't necessarily put in the work for some one reason or another uh, that, hey, we'll bring you back next week. You know, something like that. It's never out of malice. It's never no. be out of, uh, you know, being petty or anything. It's just we have to take care of the 20 people that we're responsible for. Absolutely. And you do it in a nice way. You're, you're, you're not like, oh, you suck. Leave. You're like, hey, it's <laughs> well, maybe not the you. best time tonight. Yeah, exactly. Yep. The one thing that I've been saying to Shoe Boots and to, to Kirk pretty often is, hey, let's be adults about this, right? Like everybody likes to feel like they were included in the decision and everybody likes to be warned and be communicated with before decisions are made or before they're told what they're doing. So we try to warn people the week of, hey, just so you know, we might sit some people if we need to this week. Yeah. So it's all about trying to be fair and trying to be grownups about it. But sometimes grownups can have fun. Yes. And what would you say is one of the funniest things to happen during one of your raids? Oh, any time that we have hunters pull accidentally or we're getting ready to pull and we just instantly slice, what are you doing? Or <laughs> any of our hunters, we just instantly uh, a miss pull. Oh, it's the hunter's fault every time. <laughs> We love it. I, I, I can relate. This is in a, in a dungeon group. We were going through Stratholm, and I was remarking about how this group was moving so fast. Right. And I was talking with somebody in like Discord, like, oh, you know, you know, players these days are so are so impatient and stuff like that. We get to the Baron. I'm like looking at the Baron. I did not realize as a hunter that right click pulls it. And I'm outside the door. <laughs> the door closes. And I'm like. If somebody would have waited and they're like, um, technically you're the one who pulled it. Oh, <laughs> whoopsies. <laughs> yes, I did a hunter thing. Yeah, I did a hunter thing. Well, this was back when they had barrage as a skill and hunters would cast barrage and pull every mob in the dungeon because it's so <laughs> freaking wide. Yeah. Oh, so we've just carried that forward. We, we love that joke. And any hunters listening, we, we, we love you. Yeah, we love you. You pull the highest DPS pretty frequently, so you're always welcome in the raid. <laughs> yes. So it, life's not all about games. Th there's also another side to you. Your work, and we won't go into specifics to, to, to protect you and all that. Yeah. But, but I will say it helped get us excellent free breakfast at BlizzCon, so I really appreciate that. <laughs> it helps. So... What do you do for work? You, you were saying earlier that you got into cybersecurity after uh, being at Penn State. Yeah. So I work for one of the major consulting houses of the United States. We won't go into which one for privacy reasons, but I'm a cybersecurity consultant. I do cloud security for anyone who's really interested. Um, go AWS. But so I travel for work every week. I mean, it's rare when I get to spend a full week at home with my wife, which is always a blessing. And also a curse. I'll get into that a little later, maybe. <laughs> so I fly from Philadelphia to Dallas. I've been doing that for 18 months straight, pretty much every single week down there. 
and it's great. You know, I get to interact with this client that we've been working with. It's a big name. If I said it, everybody would know who it is. And so that makes me very proud of what I'm doing. I came from a family of two teachers. They were athletic directors at my high school. And I'm really the first one to have what I would call sort of a, a national level job or a corporate job of some sort. And so it's just a very different experience. Kirk actually joined my company recently. He's starting to see some of it. What I would describe as corporate opulence, it's it's above and beyond, right? It, yeah. It's oh, not yeah. a joke. But so I remember <laughs> discussing it at BlizzCon. I'm like, oh, wow, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was eye-opening to me, right? My family wasn't in that world, but it's nice to be here. It, they're not kidding when they say that corporations suck your soul out, though. So I, uh, as much as I like my job, you know, there is – downsides to it sometimes. Uh, I don't like how much I fly on airplanes. I'm a big time like climate change supporter. Um, and so I feel guilty about that. But at the same point with this client, if you're not on site, you're dead to them. So <laughs> I, I have to be there. And it's all in the name of making everyone safer. Uh, we do a lot of like credit card security and your data protection, making sure that hackers can't get a hold of that. So it's important work. It has to happen. Whether it's me or someone else, it's, it's going to happen. So would you say that you're learning a lot of good experience here and then that later on you could do like your own private – yeah. I've, heard, I've heard people in, in your line of work doing stuff like that later on. Absolutely. So there's a ton of paths that I could go down. I could make my own company. I could make my own security product. I could do my own consultancy. I could say enough is enough. I don't want to do this anymore. I've thought about trying to weasel my way into into Blizzard and work for them in the security department. I don't know if I could pull that one off, but we'll see. I mean, uh, the video game industry in general doesn't hire a ton of cybersecurity people. So uh, hackers, if you're listening, go create a job for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this could give me a trouble with Blizzard. No, yeah, no. no. It, it's just funny. We say cybersecurity, we have the best job security in the world. There's always going to be hackers out there. Yeah, I can imagine what you're learning now is just incredible. I mean, the stuff that we would be afraid of knowing. Yeah. I'll tell you a story one time. So one of our clients was a major energy company and we had our team doing what's called a pen test, a penetration test. So they, they start on the outside of the company and they see how they can get into the company's systems and, and hack them. Some of my colleagues were a space bar away from taking down the entire power grid of one state. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So it's not a joke, right? Like this stuff is very real and with enough time and enough resources, it can be hacked. Uh, so it's kind of frightening. I like to say privacy is an illusion. If you're on the internet, Facebook knows about you and Google knows about you and they know everything about you, but uh, it's cool. I bet you listen to Dark Knight Diaries podcast. No, actually I don't. It's really good because it, it, They've just discussing like like penetration testing, and they go through some of the big things that happen. Like, I remember one of the cases. Uh, it, it's off the top of my head right now because because of how late it is. It's, right. Yeah. <laughs> but I do find it inc incredible, and also it also scary. There was one day I was looking at a at BlizzCon. Okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, it was at BlizzCon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At BlizzCon, I was hearing news about Fitbit, so I go on to Amazon to look at Apple Watches. All of a sudden, I get an email from Zag saying, hey, for your new Apple Watch. I never told you, Zag, <laughs> that I bought an Apple Watch. I yeah. didn't give you permission to do I, this. Yeah. You know, when people say like, ah, you know, I was just talking about this and it started advertising. If you use Hey Siri or the, the other command for Google that I can't say because my phone will start speaking up, it's listening all yeah. the time. Your phone is listening to you. So you get advertised based off stuff like that. And you, you, you probably know about, about this, that also it's not that like Facebook's recording you, but that you're on the same network as somebody else and your age demographic is, is being like that you and I are like, might be similar ages. So of course we're both looking at this at the exact same time. Maybe we're related and maybe yes. we like stuff. So it's so much profiling. Yeah. I mean, have you ever gotten a suggested friend request for somebody you have no mutual friends with, but you know yeah, them? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's scary. Like, How you know, did this, that happen? <laughs> Through like this gaming and the podcasting, I have found people on Facebook that I was like, how did you Facebook, do you know that that person was there? Yep. I've never talked with you. And it's because just say you share a website together that Facebook has a cookie on and they find you. Oh. Yep. Cybersecurity is an interesting thing. Uh, your privacy is an illusion. Sorry, everyone. Hate to burst yeah. your bubble. <laughs> so I'll, I'll move off of that to, to, to a different topic. So you're 
schedule can be intense some weeks. And we're recording this at around 11.45 midnight Eastern on a Friday as you just flew in from where you were working. Yeah. How do you find time to game with the fact that you seem to be flying all over the U.S. every single week? It's a combination of things. One, I'm a night owl. While I love to work out, and I know most people that work out work out in the morning, uh, I don't like doing that. So I tend to work out in the afternoon or the evening. If I'm at home, I come home, spend some time with my wife. She goes to bed, and then I game. If I'm out working, I go to LAN cafes. I suggest people try it. I would prefer my own computer, but there is a community at these LAN cafes, and it's kind of cool. And they have some really nice rigs there. So if you're looking to try out some new gear or something, you can go there. They usually have a streaming booth too if you want to do that. I play out of a LAN cafe when I get done work. When I'm at home, it's when my wife is sleeping. And the reason that she's sleeping is because my wife is a professional athlete for Team Canada. Wow. Uh, She is a swimmer trying to make it to the 2020 Olympics. And uh, she might make it. (laughs) And so it's pretty exciting. But so she goes to bed at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. And she wakes up at 5 a.m. to go to the pool. Two practices a day. We're on two different time zones. I wake up at 8.30 a.m. or 9 a.m. on weekdays. And then I go to bed at 2 a.m. And so we just, I have from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. to play video games pretty much. So how has that experience been with her practicing for the Olympics and being part of the, the national swim team? It's stressful. A little inside information. Nobody pays you to be a professional athlete unless you're on TV. Oh. Which stinks, right? Yeah. Because she spends roughly 25 to 30 hours a week training. um, And that's between 20 hours in the pool, six hours in the gym, and then four hours of physical therapy or recovery or really meal prep is included in there. If we include like actual cooking and everything, she's well over 40 hours a week. On top of that, she has to make some kind of money some way because we're still pretty young, so we have to have dual income. So she coaches as well. So she's working her tail off. I work 60-hour work weeks when I'm down in Dallas. She works 60-hour work weeks between training and coaching. And we're in this crazy part of our life where, you know, we're holding on to like our sanity, I would say. But the little time that we do get together, we protect that time so much. I turn down so many like other things that I could be doing just because I really value that time with my wife. She's the best person on this earth. And so I would rather sit down on the couch and watch Netflix with her for six hours and chit chat than go do anything else. So we do that on weekends and that's how we keep each other sane. So that's how you both stay connected throughout the week is find that time together. Yeah. I try to call her once or twice a day. Because again, I'm, I'm in Dallas and she's training. And it's a pretty lonely life to be a, a professional athlete because she swims before work for most people and after work for most people. So she can't even have a social life because she's busy when they're free and vice versa. So she's usually alone at home, which is tough for her. But so I call her pretty often, you know, drive into work, call her or drive home from work and call her whatever time works out for us. And uh, we chit chat for like half an hour, just about our days, just to keep each other, you know, sane between all the noise. Now, how does someone find their way into a national swim team? <laughs> okay, her story is is crazy, and I'll I'll provide the link after this so that if anybody wants to follow her, she I love hearing about people paying attention to her. For the Catalina Wine Mixer team, I'll be posting about her races as they come up here. She got into swimming at age eight, hated swimming until age twelve and is now going for the Olympics. And they actually decided that she was going to move away from home at age 14. So she lived west of Ottawa, a little small town called Pembroke, Ontario. And she moved to Montreal, which is a four hour drive away to live on her own in an apartment as a 14 year old. Wow. I mean, if you want to talk about these heart wrenching stories and and she's cleared me to talk about this just for everyone. She went through heart wrenching depression being alone. She almost quit when she was maybe 15 or 16. The apartment across from hers, the apartment building across from hers burned down and uh, a woman inside had died. And she, she just got like this existential crisis of, you know, I've been doing this so long. I I don't get to see my family. You you know, I'm alone here. Uh, It just came to a boiling point where she was ready to quit. And so she started going home every weekend by train Uh, her dad just said like, pull her out of this. What are you doing? But her mom said, no, she's going to stick with this. 
And here we are. She went to Penn State. That's where we met. She was the captain of the team. Uh, I thought that she was way out of my league. And uh, we ended up dating junior year, and it, I was a lifeguard there. So the running joke was, oh, did you save her life? No, she's a swimmer. I don't have to save her life. <laughs> <laughs> so I still think that I somehow like tricked the universe or something, but she's incredible. What you say is that she saved my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could say that, yeah. So what advice would you give to someone wanting to dive into swimming? Oh, first thing of all, love a good dad joke. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, wanting to dive into swimming. Uh, first thing of all, throw your kids in the pool at age three. <laughs> like literally pick them up and throw them and they will learn to swim or you will jump in and save them. <laughs> okay. I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. So it, it's a legitimate strategy. Now, if you can't swim, don't do that, <laughs> but find your local swim team, find a summer team or something and just start sending your kids there. It's a great way for you to get a couple free hours in the morning. If you're a parent, it also keeps your kid in shape unless you're like me and you were fat for your entire childhood. It did not keep me in shape. But it also, swimming's just a great activity in general. Uh, kids can hang out at the pool and uh, parents kind of get some time back to do some chores. Just remember, the lifeguard is not a babysitter and do not put them on them because I will be very angry at you. Oh, what, what do you mean they're not a babysitter? I mean, come on. I, I, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's so expensive nowadays. I, I, I can just go to the, the community center and, and just pay, pay, pay for the, the annual pass for like 400 a year. Yeah. Just drop the little twerps off and leave it for somebody else to deal with when they start kicking and screaming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was my, uh, my teenage years. I, I, I'm impressed. A Wikipedia page, a wiki page for people who may not know to, to get one of those, you have to be famous. So that is awesome. That's, yeah. that's a Wikipedia page. Yeah, I, I didn't make it. I do curate it now. Um, I yeah. update it every now and then, but I think swim Canada, uh, requested it and they, it, you know, it went up. Anybody can go try to create a page, but the level of detail that you have to include is pretty rigorous to get it yeah. to stay up. So I was impressed too. This is a big bragging point for me. My wife's on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and I know in their rules, you have to have, be of a certain level of fame and notoriety. And, and, yeah. Because and, there's no phrase of Wikipedia until you, you make the uh, top five of podcasts. I mean, <laughs> I, I bet Scott Johnson has, has, a, has a Wikipedia page. I'm not Scott Johnson. We can get you up there someday, I guarantee you. Okay. But so I like to joke. I added my name in there for like marriage details and where she's living. And I like to say my name's going to turn blue when I get famous someday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be a day where like you have like a, a thesis on something that you learned in cybersecurity, or like there'll be some some big case that comes up. Yeah, I'd like it to be CISO of Blizzard. That'd be nice. Oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. Hey, we know somebody who works at Blizzard, and and and, and maybe we could. I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I uh, I've thought about like, hey, maybe I could reach out to this sometime. But I, I was like, no, 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 no. That's not fair. I'll I'll find another way to get connected to her. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Just being you, being awesome. Though I do say, I think you've got a voice for podcasts. I think you should start you. a podcast. Maybe even on our last podcast, we were talking about raid strats and raid things. And there is still raid strats and raid podcasts that need to be made. What if yeah. you were to make a raid podcast? I thought about doing that. I've genuinely thought about it. I, my work schedule is going to hold me back. This is my first time ever doing a podcast. So yeah, you pop the cherry for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of it. I really do. The The consistency of it would be the challenge. And honestly, convincing um, one of my IRL friends to do it, almost impossible. I don't think Kirk would want to do this long term. So if if anyone in the Catalina Wine Mixer community wants to uh, run the logistics of this and invite me to the, the recording sessions on weekends, I'll show up. <laughs> hint, 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 Catalina Wine Mixer. <laughs> yep. Hint, hint. Well... I want to thank you for joining me on, on your first podcasting session. This was fun and they always go by fast. It is yeah. one of those, you get in there and like, you don't want to add too much content and take it too long. And plus I have to be the one editing it. So I, I don't want to be spending <laughs> all week in editing. Oh, uh, come on. Let's make it harder for you. <laughs> okay. Go, 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 go to like five hours. Yeah. So where can we find you on the interwebs? Uh, so I have a Twitter, uh, I don't really use it. I think, uh, Fraz linked it in the thing. I think it's like real Aeon or real yeah. underscore Aeon or something. Uh, find it in Fraz's show notes, 
better off, find me on Discord or in the game. I'm on Wormrest Accord. I'm Archaeon. That's like Arch Druid with Aeon on the end of it. Discord's the best. Hit me up there. It is incredible with, with, with Discord how it's it's free and how easy it is to get, to get there. I think most of my discussion throughout the week happens on Discord. It, it's incredible. I love the community aspect of it. I really, really do. It's the best thing for gamers, I think, since Ventrilo came out. Oh, yeah. Ventrilo and TeamSpeak. And I, I loaded up Morrowind recently, and it, it even had the, the Xbox logo. I'm like, wow, where have we come in technology? Yep. Xbox Live, paying for the subscription to just have online access. Yep. No, yeah. I, I love Discord so much. And if you're not a member of a Discord community, get out there. Start participating. Just send some messages. It's going to change your life. And look in the show notes. The Sparks Fan Discord link is in there, and we'd love to have you. And and, and, if, you, <laughs> and if you want to join a Catalina Wine Mixer, let me know. I'll, yeah. get, I'll give you the details. As long as Aeon approves. I, I have to. We have a guest tag that we can tag people with, and you're welcome to come participate in the community. Yes. Activating customized offer safe transporter. Well, I am back at my home of Iron Forge until we one day reclaim Normagon. Yeah, I'm a gnome. Let's look at what has been happening in the community. Awesome. Let's do that. So signups for the 2020 Mythic Dungeon International and Arena World Championship have opened. MDI registrations close March 20th and the AWC closes on May 11th. Find all the links at the details in the show notes. Maybe you will be the next champion. And Azeroth Public Radio Episode 2 is now out! I might have lent a voice to it for a second or two. Just don't overlook the gnome size detail. And you definitely want to check this out as Coltrane and Shubuts had my side splitting in laughter. And Icy Veins points to fan art by Slendy Daddy, who has remastered the Eastern Kingdom's loading screen, and this is very impressive bringing the Eastern Kingdoms into the 21st century. And lastly, want to stay up to date on the latest news in WoW? Well, WoW Ahead is now enabled notification on desktop and your phone, depending on the browser that you use. You can enable and also snooze news notifications, as well as choosing the category you are interested in. It might not be of interest to everyone with the deluge of notifications that we can receive daily, but it might help someone trying to stay on top of the news of Blizzard and WoW. This has been another awesome episode of Frazzlecast. Take it away, Frazzle Pants. Thank you, Scruffy. Well, a shout out to Igmu Mato, who tweeted a picture of the Frazzles chips, which they said is the food of the podcast. I need to buy a pair of these. I think that they would pair very well with an Impossible Whopper. And a shout out to Corpson, who DM'd me on Discord that my streams are chill, and they said that I'm a really nice guy. I don't say that last part to pat myself on the back, but I mean, I can because I've got long arms. I wanted to thank Corpson for this compliment. I've been trying to make the streams a fun place to be a part of. With our world the way it is, I want the streams to be a place where I can make new friends and hopefully bring light to your life. And on those streams, you have the opportunity to give back to the show financially, and I thank you so much for doing that. Thank you to my Twitch subs out there. Thank you to Burkhart, Cap, Krunk, Harlow, Jenden, Carenza, Lucas of Cardiac Valley, Michael the Genome Project, and two nerds maybe more, Nihar, Pete of Project Phoenix Productions, and Stories Around Azeroth, Razorus, Rig of Charactercraft, Scissorlord, Telenroid, Felicia, and Zorts the Goblin. And thank you to Cap and Dusty Porter for the bits. If you want to support the show financially, please go to support.nopodcast.com. And if you have Twitch Prime to Amazon Prime, you can use your free Twitch Prime subscription on my channel. It doesn't cost you anything more than Amazon Prime, but it helps me a lot. So all of your support goes to helping support this labor of love. Thank you to everyone who has given back to this show. It means a lot. Well, I am Frasley, and you can find the show at gnomepodcast.com. There you can catch past episodes and find out many of the places where you can subscribe to this show and get the Gnome Dream coming to you every single week. Well, until next week, be awesome. Our crops, lovingly nurtured, the highest quality for your family. We work hard every day, handpicking the best. We are humble farms. We don't like to brag, but we are the best. Welcome to the Fraz Report, a short broadcast by me, the awesome gnome, about the world of Warcraft. With the rise of the coronavirus in the world, and things happening like Starbucks is bending the use of reusable cups, 
cruise ships being detained, TwitchCon Amsterdam being canceled, a vaccine for the virus possibly being 12 to 18 months away, and BlizzCon's possibility this year in question, the CDC has unveiled some hygiene advice for World of Warcraft players. One, make sure to wash your hands singing the happy beta song. Happy beta to me. Happy beta to me. Happy beta to Frasley. Happy beta to me. This song is about 20 seconds. And while not raising your chances for beta, it increases your hopes for the future of what Shadowlands beta will bring. Two, please refrain from slash boop, slash hug, and even punting gnomes. As much as possible, please don't touch other players more than necessary. Three, the mythic chest in Browless and Dizarlor are going to be removed, and instead your weekly mythics will be sent to your mailbox. Four, please refrain from congregating in cities. Some auction houses, especially in rural areas like Tenaris, are being quarantined and some enterprising goblins are actually creating a longboard rental service where a driver who is monitored 24-7 is being sent to you when you need to sell on the auction house. Five, the CDC warns to only wear your horrific vision mask during a horrific vision run, and they are encouraging people to run these visions solo to reduce contact with other players. Okay, some of these guidelines I provided resemble certain things that are being encouraged in the real world. I'm aiming with this report to bring a little bit of levity, but at the end of the day, please make sure to wash your hands, reduce contact with other people, and keep up to date on the most current factual information. And let's try to find ways to bring ourselves together. This world is tearing itself apart politically, disease-wise, and even just being mean to others. We need the internet, podcasts, streams, Discord chats, YouTube videos, even more than ever. Well, until next time, please be awesome. Browsercast is a fan podcast that covers Blizzard games. We are not affiliated with Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. Views expressed by the hosts and guests are their own. Some of the art, music, and sound effects come from Blizzard Games, and they are owned by Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. No copyright infringement is intended. This show is for the community, and it contains contributions from the community. The Gnome Train intro is by Alley of Dungeon Fables and All Things Azeroth. The opening music is by Brandon T. Blaylock. The Gnome Roar is by Jen of Morally Gray Podcast. And the Frazzle Pants Bumper at the end is by the Scruffy Druid of Loot Optional and Viral Voice Arts. This show is brought to you by Dragon Powered Studio. Find more at dragonpoweredstudio.com. It's been fun. Farewell!